introduce our first speaker. Uh, Governor Mark Dayton began his career, not his political career, but his, prof his professional career as somebody committed to social justice. He began teaching in inner city New York public schools. And his career throughout has been one, whether as a teacher, as the state auditor, as a US senator, and now as governor, dedicated to social justice. That's what Senator Humphrey and Vice President Humphrey was all about. And today, as we call upon Governor Dayton, we do so because with this dedication, this memorial now becomes the property, a part of the state of Minnesota. Governor Dayton, we're delight delighted to be able to present this to you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Cohen. And it's my honor to accept uh, this wonderful memorial on behalf of the people of the state of Minnesota. But the second week I was in the United States Senate in January of 2001, I was invited to the retirement reception for a woman who had worked on the staff of uh, Senator Humphrey after he returned from being vice president. And she was at the time then working for Georgia Senator Max Cleland. So as we're standing in the, the hallway there, uh, Senator Cleland's uh, neighbor in the Senate came, came walking by. It was uh, Senator Jesse Helms. And the woman introduced me to him. I had not yet met him. And uh, said, uh, Senator Dayton, the new senator from Minnesota, I, you know, Senator, I used to work for Hubert Humphrey. And Senator Helms paused for a moment. He said, you know, when Hubert Humphrey came to the Senate, I didn't think I would like him. We didn't agree on anything, but he had the biggest heart. And then he paused, then he continued, he said, I remember the last time he came to the Senate floor. And at that point, he choked up, and the tears started streaming down his face. And I remembered something for Senator, Vice President said, said, Senator Helms, Hubert Humphrey said, a man who can't cry is a man who has no heart. And he took my hand and shook it and appreciation and that quote came from a speech iconic speech that I saw played many times uh, at AFL CIO gatherings Dave Rowe brought everybody to tears the speech that the vice president gave reportedly the night after he learned that he had terminal cancer and he said a man who can't cry is a man who has no heart he said I'd rather live 50 years like a tiger than 100 years like a chicken and he showed the passion he showed the deep commitment, the love he had for the people he served, the love he had for the state of Minnesota, the love he had for this great country. And it was so obvious he cared. He didn't want to leave this life because he cared so much about what he was doing. He believed in what he was doing, and he knew he was making a difference. And it's that passion, it's that commitment, it's that dedication to making this world a better one before we pass on that I think is the living legacy of this great man and will be the living legacy of this memorial. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Dayton. One of the hallmarks of, of Senator Humphrey and Vice President Humphrey was his work on a bipartisan basis. All of us who know the history of the 1964 Civil Rights Act know that that's how it was put together when he approached the then Minority Leader Everett Dirksen of Illinois. And representing that kind of bipartisanship and that kind of bipartisan ability to govern is Governor Arne Carlson. And Governor Carlson was also the governor who signed the first appropriation relative to this memorial. Governor Carlson. Thank you very much, Senator Cohen and Mr. Vice President, distinguished members of the United States Senate, and beloved members of the Humphrey family and dear friends of Hubert Humphrey. As a young man working on the Humphrey presidential campaign staff, we always referred to him as the senator. There was no other name, just the senator, because he personified that title. Titles do not create leaders. Rather, leaders give definition to titles. And that is why Hubert H. Humphrey will always be the senator. And he has left to us 
a legacy and a challenge. Public service meant serving the public good. It was not about personal gain or poll numbers. No, he understood the great issues of the day and he vigorously participated and led. In Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, actor Jimmy Stewart, fighting desperately for his cause, acknowledged that maybe it was a lost cause. But then he went on to declare that they're also the ones that are worth fighting for. When the senator fought for civil rights, it was a lost cause. But he clearly understood that this cause was worth fighting for. And ultimately, America agreed, and we all stand taller for it. Today, amidst the dysfunctional political system, a system where compromise is under attack and disagreement is all too often treated as disloyalty, the senator would likely summon his full passion and energy to advance his own core beliefs, beliefs of reason, goodwill, and opportunity for all. He saw America as it could be, and he brought out the best in all of us. Today, we dedicate a statue in his honor. But in a broader sense, we dedicate ourselves to his belief in public service and his courageous commitment to it. Senator, thank you very much. Thank you. I mentioned last night that we had a remarkable evening with members of the Humphrey staff. John Stewart, one of the most significant individuals working for Senator and Vice President Humphrey, said that as far as he was concerned, one of the personifications in today's contemporary United States Senate from all of the senators was our next speaker, and what a better introduction than what John Stewart gave her, our senior senator, Senator Amy Klobuchar. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator Cohen. Very kind. Thank you, everyone. It's such an honor to be here. We're going to hear from President Clinton, but also with Vice President Mondale, uh, Senator Franken, Senator Coleman, Senator Boswich, uh, Representative McCollum and Luther, uh, Governor Carlson, Governor Dayton, Attorney General Humphrey. Uh, this was a day like no other. For those of you visiting from out of town, let's just say not every summer day this year has been this nice. Uh, so Hubert Humphrey is smiling down on us today. Uh, I was in high school, 1978, a senior in high school, when Hubert Humphrey died. And like tens of thousands of Minnesotans, I stood out in that line with my dad in a winter coat and hat and mittens. It was probably 100 degrees colder than it is right now. But you think of those people, tens of thousands of people in line, and that's how much Minnesota loved Hubert Humphrey. To this day, neither Minnesota nor the United States Senate has ever seen anyone quite like him with his burst of energy and optimism. When you look at the landmark laws that have been passed during the last 60 years, Humphrey's fingerprints are on all of them. From civil rights to Medicare to nuclear arms control, the list goes on and on. But as his legacy, Hubert Humphrey left us even more than these great legislative achievements. What he gave us was a spirit of optimism, the hope and belief that working together, we can make tomorrow better than today. When people come and see this statue and this beautiful memorial, that's the single most important thing I hope that they remember. Because as we all know, optimism isn't always easy to hold on to. You think of back in 1948, a young mayor, his whole political career in front of him. What a gutsy move. He went to that convention and he took on civil rights. He was convinced that racial segregation and Jim Crow were an ugly stain on our democracy, and he was determined to challenge the status quo. He was optimistic that the good in America would trump 
prejudice. Now, not everyone was happy. As he spoke, 35 Dixiecrat delegates stood up and left. But Humphrey didn't let it phase him, and he didn't back down. In circumstances like that, it takes courage to stay optimistic. Okay, the president is here. I noticed everyone was looking away from my remarks. Um, and so we welcome uh, President Clinton. Thank you so much, President Clinton. We are so excited to have you here today. And I will say that you share that Humphrey quality of optimism that I was just talking about. See the segue. Um, uh, and you not only had that optimism when you were president, but most importantly to all of us, you've continued uh, that optimism when you've left the White House. And our country and our world are the better for it. So thank you for that. I will tell you it is somewhat amusing for me to have this happen because my favorite story, my first moment in Washington was with President Clinton when I got to introduce him when he introduced the hate crimes legislation as a young prosecutor. I stood outside of the East Room with him, nervous, and I was told to walk in at a certain time and the band started playing Hail to the Chief. Da -da -da. And I started walking, and all of a sudden I felt this big hand on my shoulder, and this voice said, you're going to do great out there, but when they play that song, I usually go first. <laughs> all right. True story. Hey, that was my first thing in Washington. This was my second, so there. Um, I was talking about the optimism of Hubert Humphrey. The last thing I would leave you with as you come to see this statue and people all over the world see it is just the belief that he had in the people that he represented. There's a long time story told by Norman Sherman who's out there about when Humphrey asked him to write every year the letters congratulating the people who won prizes at our great Minnesota State Fair. Now, back then, 600 people won prizes, including honorable mentions. Uh, and these were things like butter sculptures, of course, blue ribbon honey, and seed art. In fact, President Clinton, you would be glad to know that your picture uh, was forever fixed up on the wall in the crop art exhibit made in glued-on kernels of corn. Well, back when Humphrey was in the Senate, Norm Sherman went up to him and said, you know, Mr. Senator, I, this just, we have so much important work to do than write these 600 letters. And Humphrey said this to him. He said, we recognize achievement. Maybe these people didn't win a Nobel or a Pulitzer, but a handicraft or an animal or a flower or a bottle of homegrown beans, it's what they do. And if they did it well enough to win a prize, then that's also enough to merit a letter from their senator. You see, Humphrey... Humphrey cared about everyone, regardless of their status. And that's why I have his picture in my lobby right when you walk in. And I put it there for a reason. It's a reminder that more than ever, our nation needs a good, strong dose of Humphrey optimism and a stronger dose of remembering the people that we were sent to represent. 
Today in Washington, we have a choice. We can hunker down in despair and defiance, pointing fingers of blame, or we can stand up and face these challenges directly with the confidence that if we work together, we can solve these problems. I have no question what Hubert Humphrey's choice would be. So in the days and months ahead, I hope people from all over the world come to see this statue. But most importantly, I hope people in Washington remember the spirit of Hubert Humphrey. I know I will. Thank you.